So let's talk about net-based wiring and what it is within ePlan. So I have a simple drawing here and it's just a bunch of contactors. And I haven't connected the zero volts at the minute. All that is connected is Q8 and it is connected to a terminal over here. So if I want to daisy chain these contactors together, I can use a T node. So insert and then I can just grab my T node. So I have a few different T nodes available, so I can press tab to select different ones and they all do different jobs. So for instance, if I grabbed this T node here and placed a couple, this would indicate uh, to ePlan and to the Wyman that they all go back to that terminal. So in reality, this T node uh, wouldn't be uh, correct because the terminal could only have uh, one connection in this case. So they're all going back and that is not correct. So I'm going to grab a different T node and I'm going to use this one here and I'm going to place this along all of my connections to my contactors. I'm just going to replace that one and then this one as well. So this one here indicates a daisy chain pattern. So I'll be wiring from one contactor to the next and to the next. If I have a look at my connection list here, I can see all my connections. So I come from the source, which is X5, which is a terminal strip, to Q1, which is my first contactor, and then Q1 goes to Q2, Q2, Q3, etc. So that's really great. That's one way to do it. So if I go to Pro Panel now, and I place all my contactors, I can wire those in 3D. And ePlan will just wire them exactly how I've shown them in my schematic and on that wiring list like before. Really straightforward. So that's how wiring works with an ePlan. You just use your T nodes and that'll indicate the way the wires need to be routed within the schematic. Now say for instance I move contactor 2, which is this one, and put it up here. So I still want to come out the terminal, but now I want to go to Q2 first and then down to Q1 and then daisy chain across to the rest of the contactors. So how would I show that or how does that need to be done? So if you're basing it off how I just done it here, I could just move around say Q1 and Q2 like so. And then I could just reroute it and you can see my connection list now represents that. So it goes to Q2 and then down to Q1. So I've just changed the order in which they are wired. So that'll work. And if I route it now, it'll work just as I described based off that connection list. So it comes out of the terminal into Q2 and then down and then down again. So I'm just going to undo a few steps here and then put them back into order here. Like so. So let's go back to our schematic. So I want to leave my schematic in the order. This logically makes sense to me. But what I can do is I can jump across to where my distribution terminal is and then insert a net based definition point. So if I insert this now, I get some more options. I can give this net a name. So I'm going to call this 0v3. And then on the net connections, I can see all the connections on this net, on this daisy chain. And then what I can do is I can set the path or the route at which they go. So if I hit this daisy chain button, and then all I do is I select the order in which they need to be routed. So I'm going to go from the terminal to Q2, and then 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So this is the path in which I want them connected. So I hit OK, and then when I look at the connections now, they've been changed to points, and now these are all part of a net or a daisy chain. So if I go back into ePlan, and then I move this one up here like so, and then route them again, you'll see that the routing actually follows that logic I set on the net. So that's one way of doing it, and that is a way in uh, of me manually figuring out the best way to do it. So let's go back a few steps. So I'm going to go back and go to the time where I didn't insert that net. So I still have my daisy chain here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Q2 
back up here. So I'm back to the same step I was before. So ePlan can actually figure this out automatically for me. I don't have to uh, manually manage this if I don't want to. So I'm going to use this optimize nets button here. And I just hit OK. And then ePlan will figure out the best path of this to be routed, like so. So I hit OK. And ePlan's done that magic for me that I did previously manually. And this will work over and over again. So if I move this one up here, and maybe this one over here, and then I click Optimize Nets, ePlan will figure out the best way to route these wires through the cabinet for me, and I don't have to worry about it, which is amazing. It saves me so much time. On my connection list, my connection list represents this. So if I'm printing out labels, if I'm sending this list to my wireman, if he's wiring via smart wiring, uh, he's got this information for him uh, available whenever he needs it. And you can look at it and figure out the best way or the way it needs to be routed through the cabinet, which is, uh, which is way better than uh, trying to do that manually. Okay, I hope that hope that whole makes sense and I uh, hope you enjoy that. So start getting used to using smart wiring. It's going to save you a ton of time. It's going to make your designs better and overall just a better engineering experience.